This is one thing that you uh, told me to keep in mind. You mentioned that it might be useful if I asked you about the Dalai Lama and science. Oh yeah, no. So this is this is uh, useful. So you're you're an attorney, right? And so you know they don't they don't really focus that much on quantum mechanics or on anything like that in your preparation. So like the rest of us have to learn a little bit of law. Uh, it's good for people outside the sciences to learn, you know, some basics. Mm-hmm. And so the the Mind Science Institute was something started by the Dalai Lama, I think, in the seventies, maybe the eighties. And what he would do is get together with, you know, the best scientists he could muster and discuss things like brain science, physics, uh, evolution, all kinds of great scientific subjects. And they would debate. Oh, yeah, that, that gives me an opportunity to, uh, let's say, mind science, uh, physics, uh, maybe astrophysics and so on and so forth. But the story I wanted to tell was how I got into any of this business. I was an undergraduate at Harvard, and I used to hang out at MIT because I liked the tech stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And at any rate, I was there with a friend, and, and we saw a notice that said that there was going to be a neuroscience conference with the Dalai Lama. And we're going, well, that sounds interesting. Although we didn't know anything about anything back way back then. This is in the 70s. And I went to this... Uh, basically a debate on stage between the Dalai Lama and three of my heroes, neuroscience heroes. I mean, these guys are Nobel laureates and like that. And what was extraordinary to me was that the Dalai Lama cleaned the floor with them. It was ridiculous. He would ask the most basic questions about uh, about their experimentation and, and have questions that would lead to actionable questions that would lead to the next experiment, right? The guy was really, really smart and really articulate and unlike everybody else on the stage, wasn't trying to push his own agenda, which is strange enough because you just didn't see that scientists have a, are very strongly biased in their own directions, of course. So here was one who, who wasn't about that. And he was much clearer than they were and much smarter than they were and less agenda and ego driven than they were and as a young student i mean it was obvious that this guy had new stuff that they didn't know and these guys were my heroes right so i i mean i didn't do anything at the moment you know i was getting ready for med school and things like that but but i remember noting in my own mind thinking whoa what is this i thought they were supposed to be you know you know orientals weren't that that smart when it came to science, uh, let alone brain science. But here, this guy was like literally moving our field forward just by asking questions that were uh, well intentioned and and showed some understanding of what the issues really were. And so I remember that. And and then years later, ten years later, something like that when the things fell in place for me to go study with him, I remembered that and that helped. So, so I just want to convey that story because I think it's important that people imagine that people in the Dharma are, are weak, weak minded, you know, or weak willed or something's wrong with them. What if they were really smart, they'd be in science. And, uh, that's simply not true. So I, I share that with other folks and ask them to keep an open mind and explore uh, scientific minds and, and the Dharma, and they're going to be they're going to be surprised if they think otherwise. So, and and, and good people on there too, like uh, uh, Claudio Naranjo, I think. Well, I don't know if he was there, but another one, uh, another Spanish guy who basically he and his teacher in, invented the term autopoiesis, uh, a biologist, uh, Varela. Was it Varela? Francisco Varela? Maybe. At any rate, there's a lot of stories like this. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that scientist died. But the tradition, I think it still continues. And they discuss physics, you know, quantum physics, uh, nuclear physics, every, anything you want to learn about. And so what these guys do is they, they, the Westerners go over and they present to the Dalai Lama. 
and then the Dalai Lama asks questions, and then someone else presents, and then the Dalai Lama asks questions, and somebody else presents, and then they discuss it. And uh, especially the early ones, in my experience, are really, really good if you need the basics of something like quantum mechanics or something and, like that. And what is that called? The Mind Science Institute in Dharamsala. Uh, 